Hey, how's it going, everybody? Michael Oskam here from ProWestRecording.com. Uh, brand new technology tonight. We have picture in picture. And I don't know how I feel about it yet, but uh, I figured it's time to get a little bit more personal with, uh, with my teachings. So, hi. For those of you who had no idea what I look like, now you do. Uh, <laughs> that was weird. Okay, so I'm going to show you something cool today. A quick video, and it's uh, strictly... It strictly applies to Pro Tools 11 users. So, not to paint myself in a corner here, but unless you're using Pro Tools 11, this tutorial will not help you. Um, it is based around something that other DAWs have been able to do for a while. So if you use Logic or um, Reaper or some of these other things, they have this function. So, it's about time Pro Tools caught up. And what we're talking about is offline bouncing. And I'm going to show you two real world instances where it's really helpful and a time saver. And it's really, really quite simple. And a lot of people don't know how to do it. So I figure, um, let's get on it. So first, let me, let me give you a taste of what we're working with here. Oh, I'm being lame. Hang on. I'm still amazed at the power you hold on me. Okay, it's a song by me, it's called A Love Worth Giving, and it will be on my upcoming uh, release, so you kind of get to see behind the curtain here, which is very, very cool. Um, so let's say, here, let me give you a scenario. Let's say you're running a, a Pro Tools system on a laptop, or maybe an older computer, and it's, it's a little bit slow, especially Pro Tools 11, right? it's a fast it's a very fast dot that's, that's not what i mean but um you know it's designed to utilize all of the ram in your computer and if you have like an old macbook pro or something like that chances are you have like four gigs of ram and if you're using a lot of plugins and stuff you may be getting playback uh error messages all sorts of stuff and you know such is life such as pro tools life you're gonna have to deal with it now in pro tools 11 it's a lot better because if your machine has 8 gigs or 16 gigs or if you have something incredible like 32 gigs or something in a Mac Pro, then you're stoked. You can use a bunch of virtual instruments and, you know, r rarely run into issues. But this, this, this lesson is for, for people who are, um, well, experiencing issues for one. And the other is to maybe if you're getting prepped to send some stems to another mixer or if you're sending... Um, uh, stems to a mastering engineer or anything like that it would be really helpful to know how to do this and it's really really quite simple so let's let's play with the first scenario for a second let's say i'm getting some playback error messages as you can see it's not a, a very large session but i'm using a, a quite a bit of processing here especially on my vocal track yeah in purple here so uh i, I have melodyne as you guys know me by now i always tune my vocal i don't care if you're uh you know Andrea Bocelli or something. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna do it. Um, and then I have CLA vocals, Chris Lord Algae by Waves, doing a little bit of stuff, some little compression, reverb here and there. But I am running some of my effects in line, so they're not sends, yeah. And then I have uh, some EQ, some compression, and a deesser on the end. So I've made, let's say, I've made my my tunings in Melodyne, and I tweaked my EQs. I got everything right where I want it wouldn't it be cool if I could bounce this into an audio file that, and then ditch all these plugins so I could free up my CPU power? Now, it used to be that you'd have to bounce everything in Pro Tools in real time, which could suck because if you have, let's say it's a long song. There's like, let's say it's a six-minute song. There's six minutes right there per track. You could only do one at a time. So let's say you have, like, you're doing stems and you have like, I don't know, 12 stems. You're going to be there all day. But now it'll do it offline and it's incredibly fast. So here's how you do it. Let's go into my output on my vocal track. And I've already renamed a bus in uh, this session called my bounce bus. And it's just a bus that doesn't go anywhere. Okay. So you route it to your bounce bus. Right click, click bounce, bounce bus. Now here comes this dialog box. You'll, it'll look familiar because this is the same one that pops up when you're bouncing your, your, um, your stereo mix at the end. 
So what you want to do is first you need to know for certain which uh, what setting your session is in. So your bit depth, bit depth and sample rate. I always run at 48K, 24-bit. That's where I'm at. If you're sending it to another mixer or mastering engineer, find out what their preferred sample rate and bit depth is, okay? If you're, we all know that if you're bouncing to CD or, you know, something for uh, like an iPhone or something, an MP3, right? It's always going to be 16-bit, 44-1. But in this case, I need to keep the, the sample rate and everything the same because I'm going to be re-importing the track into my session. So first, select the track length, right? So that's that. Now we're going to go right-click, bounce, bounce, bus, 24-bit, 48K. We're going to make sure to check import after bounce. Then we're going to rename it. We'll call this Leadvoc Bounce 1. That's fine. When you're choosing your file path, your directory, make sure you're saving it in your project folder in the audio files folder. Okay, It'll default, I think, to bounced files, which you may lose the file. You may just lose track of it. All, everything else is in the audio files folder, so put this in there. Go ahead and do that. And then make sure the offline button down here on the bottom left is, is selected. Click bounce. In, as you can see, eight times as fast, it's going to produce a track that will have rendered and written into it the vocal, all the Melodyne changes I've made, the CLA vocal effects processing, my EQs, everything will sound as if it was here. It's just as it, it's been printed into the track. So, I don't know if I said this already. Make sure you all your changes, you're for sure 100%, okay? Because you can't go back now. So, it's going to bring up this option. Uh, you can either bring it into your clips list or a new track. Let's select new track at the session start, okay? Boom, there it is. It's going to be um, the same time. It'll be right in, in sync. We can actually cut off the uh, the first bit of it here. And let's take a, so now to free this up, we can right click. We you could delete it, but you know maybe I need to go back into it at some point and change something in Melodyne, a tuning thing or something. So I'm just gonna hide and make inactive at this point. Let's reroute this back out to where it was, which was the Vox sub saturation. That's where I'm getting some tape saturation. And let's take a listen. I'm still amazed at the power you hold on me. There it is. And it's got all my effects. It's got everything that I had uh, already in it. Now I can just come in here and reset my uh, my sends. In fact, what I should have done is dragged them over. You know what I mean from the existing track. Uh, but I think I had uh, like a room verb going. Uh, a little bit of that, and I had a long delay section because in the bridge of this song, there is a long delay, and uh, that's to be automated. So. Okay, how cool is that? Here's uh, scenario number two. Let's say you have some MIDI instrument tracks. Same thing happens here. We all know that virtual instruments take up a lot of your CPU power, a lot of your RAM, okay? And if you don't have a lot of RAM, you know, don't get me wrong, four, RAM, four gigs of RAM is enough RAM to run Pro Tools on. But if you start stocking up on your virtual instruments, you may, you're going to definitely start uh, having some playback engine errors. So it's good once you've solidified the performance, you know that everything sounds the way you want. It's good. It's a good idea to ditch the virtual instrument and just be working with audio. Let's be honest too. Working with MIDI files uh, can really be kind of a bitch sometimes. So uh, if you're better off working with audio waveforms, geez, this is going to make it a lot easier, yeah? Same idea. Switch your output to bounce bus, right-click, bounce, bounce, bus, and again, make sure all of these things are correct, and click bounce. And very quickly, as you can see, 20, almost 26 times the speed of playback, it will um, render us a new track. And we'll go again at session start. And now here, I should have renamed it, but I'm trying to save time here. Now we'll have our string part. We can, again, hide and make this inactive. Sweet, right? And the greatest thing is, too, it's, it's just an audio form. A waveform file so now we can still apply processing if we want to it yeah and if we didn't delete it and you just hide and make an active we can certainly go back into it and uh you know 
re redo any of the parameters and relay it off very, very quickly. So this is a huge time saver, super convenient. Thank you, uh, Avid, Pro Tools 11. Um, a great addition to the software and a real, a real treat to be working with uh, in, in the studio. So hope this helped you out. Do uh, you have any questions? Drop me a comment or go to prowestrecording.com. Send me an email. Uh, also, if you're interested in uh, personalized, customized, one-on-one um, -on -one sessions, hit me up through the website too. Uh, I've been helping people literally all over the world from London to LA. So um, it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a blast. It's been a lot of fun and really beneficial. So uh, check it out and I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.